Hello and welcome to ArcGIS and yeah, getting used to ArcGIS Pro with the lesson number five. And we will talk today about customizing the map even more by, first of all, using different base maps because base maps might give your map a new twist so you can highlight your information and you will not be so reliant on the base map itself. Uh, we will customize symbols and labels so we will emphasize the information you would like to tell to the viewer and different viewers of your map might need different uh, informations of your map so we will take a special look on this. Furthermore we will create a project package for sharing so that you will be able to share not only your map but also the data that belongs to your map. Last but not least we will use the measure tool because yeah keeping an eye on the whole setup of the map using scales also needs you to know okay what are the dimensions of my map of my features and so on so we will use the measure tool as well i hope you enjoyed stay with me so let's start right away with the symbology of a layer and if you can look closely and remember the last sessions uh, we are dealing with a map that was part of the last lesson where we have altered the layer um, composition we had a look on the feature table and if you remember correctly or if you remember it um, we talked about what is the spatial data right and we are looking at the cities layer here and this layer consists of two uh, main main information levels where so the spatial information and what is there spatial information is here stored in the column shape so that's geometry information and then we have other information we call it properties or attributes and the attributes are here called city name gmi admin admin name fips country and so on and this contains information about what is there sometimes it is hard to differentiate because we can also store of course latitudes and longitudes as feature attributes that is somehow a derivative of the geometry but first of all remember there's an information of on location and the geometry called geometry information and then there's a feature information itself and now we will see we are seeing uh, blue dots on the map and the size of a dot somehow represents the population size right so you have the legend entry here the, we can modify the symbol and we will do this um, in, in a few seconds and, uh, the bigger the circle is the bigger or the larger is the population or the higher is the number of um, inhabitants in this city and if we select your cities and you can see it's already enabled here we have the contextual uh, feature layer a ribbon group where we have the groups appearance labeling and data we will now only have a look on the appearance so you can have you can alter the visibility range you can make it more or you can increase the opacity and de decrease it you can use a swipe tool so swiping is from making part of the of the layer visible let's go back to the export tool and um, yeah, then there's the symbology. And now let's have a look on the symbology. I'm simply um, expanding this so there are some default behaviors, and you can see that we are currently using a graded symbol. So let's go through the main parts, or so the main styles. First of all, single symbol is just where is it, right? Drawing using symbols or single symbols. There's no differentiation between any features. There's just a point or, or a triangle or, or an ellipse on the map. Then there's unique values. You're using this for you know, unique values, like like let's say maybe for for um, the status in our case here. We have provincial capitals, others national capitals, and so on. So categorized data might be used for this then we have graded colors graded colors might be sufficient for quantitative data like the population in our case right 
and then you have um, so the color intensity is changing or the color itself is changing best example might be height values ranging from green low values to red to high values keep in mind people are out there that cannot really differentiate between green and red so keep that in mind then we have graded symbols that is not using the color indicator to to, to indicate the change of value so the color but it's changing the size or the the extent of a symbol right or, or the thickness of lines and so on so we are dealing with the geometry of the symbol itself right so we're maybe increasing and decreasing circles like we are doing here then we have proportional symbols heat maps and dictionaries that are not so often used but you can you can still select them let's but let's stick to the most common ones right we are dealing here now with graded symbols that's cool for a moment now i'm switching here on symbology and you can see that there's now this um, menu for the symbology and we have here first of all the primary symbology we are using graded symbols same same dialog over here right we we'll stick to this we are indicating the values of population and there's no normalization in place um, so we are not dealing with any min max or dividing or something else we are using manual intervals so you can see you can either define a quantile equal interval so every one million inhabitants we are um, having uh, a new class break and uh, then there are defined intervals where you can say well i would like to have one interval from zero to five hundred thousand and from five hundred thousand to two million two million to five million so you can really play around with that um then there's manual intervals as well um then you have the geometric interval um that is behaving a little bit different and the standard deviation that is might be suitable if you have really outlier values you will not like to um overemphasize you so um we are using a minimum size of four so this small symbol is having size of four and the maximum symbol have a size of 12. so let's increasing those values so you see that the visual impact of the of the map is changing a lot so you're over emphasizing the larger symbols and you you're over blending smaller uh, or smaller cities by the bigger cities so let's go back here to 14 i think it was it's always adopted to the current situation now there's a template so this template is used to define all the other symbols of course you can format symbols by itself so just by clicking there let's go back we will deal you with a template let's click on it and you will get now a template that can be altered automatically by ArcGIS Pro so there are standard circles here squares triangles pentagons and so on these symbols are then used to either make it bigger or smaller depending on the population value right and now we'll we will go with a circle let's use circle number three here and now if circle number three is defined by a very much smaller circular surrounding so the line in the template is different and uh, let's have a look here on the properties so you can see now that there are some properties we are dealing with a base color in red we are dealing with having a size a base size then there is some properties for the different layer levels let's call it like this so even or a symbol levels even a symbol consists of different layers so we have a layer for 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 the for the circle inner part then we have a layer for the outer outline and so on and you can um even make more layers on every symbol so we can add a triangle here as well uh, and uh, and an ellipse if we want to but this makes it even harder to to see the map of course so let's have a look here we can also decrease the outline with even more let's go with 0.2 points the difference is not really good visible so maybe now say three points 
can see it here in the in the uh, in the in the um, preview. Zero point two. Let's use this. I'll go back here. Yes, I would like to apply it. And now I have the cities with a very thin uh, surrounding outline. So as we have dealt now with the symbology of a layer, let's have a look here on the labels. So I've already created or choose to the labeling context rule ribbon here, but there are no labels visible right now because I need to assign it either by pressing here to label the features or by right clicking on the layer of, of choice and select the label option. Now I can see that the labels are hard to distinguish, so I cannot really see where is it, where is Tokyo here, so there's Kyoto, Kobe, Tokyo, which points belongs to which label, and the labels are also overlaying on top of each other, so first of all, let's say I don't want to see labels that are too, uh, uh, when the map is too is showing too much information, right? So I'm saying, well, if I'm going out beyond 75 million in scale, I will not see any labels. And I can see the current scale is 1 to 150 million. So this is even better. So when I'm zooming in, there's a threshold 62 million. Now is the next zoom level. And now I can see all the different labels. If I'm zooming in, the label size will be adjusted to, to the current situation or to the current setting. And the setting label itself is used over here so i'm using a, a fixed a fixed font size for every label currently we have a label size of 12 which does not really change for every city right so all small cities where we have small small circles have the same label size as the bigger cities all the larger cities so how can we deal with that this is a little icon here where i can say let's change the text symbol and you can see here that there is some yeah we can work with the class and the class just says well i would like to use an expression and i'm trying to connect the value of a feature to the style of the feature or the style of the label so what i'm do what i will do i will use here this um, label expression so that triggers what shall be written right now currently the expression is city name i will switch to the new arcade, arcade style or style or language you can see that now the expression is dollar feature so every feature the city name city name is a column here uh, shall be written i can even concatenate this so let's have a look whether there's a concatenate function here concatenate let's use this one with hamburger just press on apply field not found city ham city nam why because it is city name let's apply this and now you can see every city has the uh, second uh, second label hamburger but there's also a function called if and I have says, well, have a look on the feature, the population value. And when the population value is bigger than, let's say, 5 million, right? So, more, well, let's go with 7 million. These are quite large cities. 7 million should be fine. Then, I would like to apply a different font. And for this, we are saying, well, the font should be a little bit bigger. We will still use, or we will use the Arial font. And the size font should be, oh, let's say 16, right? And we will still show the dollar feature dot city underscore name plus, and now we will need to escape the font. FMT. And if it is smaller than 7 million, of course we need to, or we would like to use a different font. Let's go with 8. 
close this. Let's have a check here, or let's press on apply. And then you can see all the big cities and large cities like Bogota, Lima, Buenos Aires, and so on are using a different label compared to the smallest cities. But to be quite honest, do you know the distance between different cities on this map? So how far is it from Lima, let's say, to London? We are using the measure tool for this. So let's click on measure. We would like to measure the distance. We are going from Lima in Peru, which is over there. Remember, we have altered the visibility of the labels. We're using the geodesic measurement tool with metric distances. And you can see that's not a straight line. So we are doing geodesic measurements. And it is about 10,000 kilometers from Lima to London. Let's use the export tool once more. Make a new measurement, maybe from New York to London. Not going directly over Greenland, right? But uh, it is. It might be in sight, and uh, it is about six thousand kilometers. So these are the um, options to measure. We can use metrics and kilometers. So it's always or quite comparable. You will go over uh, over Greenland if you're flying to San Francisco. So um, this is the way to measure things. And if we are going to the eastern part uh, from San Francisco, like to India, we are going over the Pacific. This is the way the measurement tool works. We can also measure areas, measure features, and so on. So for the time being, we are using not a real base map. But first of all, if we, if we will go to the base maps, let's close the measure tool here. And we are using an ocean layer that is just pale blue. And we have that lead long grids. We will remove this one. And I would also like to remove the world population layer. Now I only have circles, right? And now I can add a base map by using the base map tool over here. And that's loading the current set of base maps that are available due to ArcGIS Online. And let's select here this Oceans base map. Now we are, as the base map says, well, we are overemphasizing the, the structure of the ocean. It might not be the right choice, right? Because we are dealing here with cities. So let's change this and maybe just use a human geography map because we are dealing with human geography right cities are part of human geography and now we can see that there are our points of interest and our um our cities in this map so this quite or well, comes in quite handy we can also turn off the labels here because now we have an over over emphasizing of the labels because we can see the label of the base map and the label that comes with our labeling approach. If I'm turning on off this label here, you can see that we just have the labels of choice that we decided to see or to show on the map here uh, as well. So this is now a big difference. Um, always make sure to use your, some sort of fitting base map as that so we can we can use really strange base maps uh, just because they look cool, but they are that they they are guiding the viewer of your map to a different direction. So always keep in mind what shall um, what you would like to communicate with your map. Would you like to have your viewer look at the cities and where they are? So we have big red circles here and here and over there maybe. Or would you like to emphasize the structure of the ocean ground keep in mind by choosing the right base map as we are now having a map that we would like to share with others around the world maybe also with the data we will use the share well, contextual not contextual but the share ribbon group and there are possibilities to or options to share the project as the project package project also contains geoprocessing history, uh, other map documents. Now we are only having one map composition here, layers, 
it is called, but we will go with the map package. Now, the sharing, uh, sharing option comes up here. We would not like to upload the package to online account. And you might remember the first videos where we talked about ArcGIS Online. ArcGIS Online is really the count, one counter or one, one cornerstone of the platform itself. So it really pushes you to, to share your data there. We will save the package to a file. Now it is stored over here. Let's do the map for oh, getting to know ArcGIS Pro. Well, you can also just change the summary. So cities with high population values. Then there are some tags you might uh, remember then from ArcGIS Online. And we will include enterprise and UNC path data. So let's analyze this one. Everything looks cool. So let's package this up. Packaging is in progress. That's preparing the data. Let's click on manage the package. So there it is already. This is our map package that was created. Let's close this one. And let's open this up. This now has opened up in a new in a new window. It's fetching all the data. And now this is exactly the map I was used to see. So I'm sorry for this long video. It was quite a ride, but if you have any questions or notes on this video, just drop them in the comment section down below. Otherwise, subscribe. Take care and goodbye.